From Greek heritage to Australian politics and bridging business between Australia and Saudi Arabia, today's guest is breaking barriers. Stay tuned to hear about her remarkable journey. The Greek uh, cultural background really um, made me proud of who I was um, and uh, I wanted to do something myself. Um, like like what you're doing right now um, with Brains Flat. There's a lot for Australian businesses uh, and Saudi Arabia seems in the next five years is just going to increase and advance at a rapid scale. And when you have, um, can decide to do something crazy like myself and run for politics, which is not an easy thing. Um, you need a lot of volunteers. You need to fundraise yourself. It's almost like stuff. It's your responsibility to expect more from those that are um, representing you. Expect more and then the standard of politician will increase. Every time you mention Australia with passion, how much do you love this country? I have never seen anyone who loved this country as much as you do. Running from one place to another, different countries. Seriously, yeah. what do you want? Well, I've always said my biggest fear is that I would... Fiona, welcome to Brands Club. We're going to do a bit of flying. We're going to start with Greece, where you come from. Beaches of Rhodes and Mykonos. <laughs> and yeah. then we fly a bit to, towards Saudi Arabia. Um, the, your big initiative that you're doing now between Australia and yeah. Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And we'll end up in Australia, back in Australia where we are. Um, awesome. From tech to politics. Oh, my God. Like, what is next for Fiona? We're going to talk about all of this stuff in <laughs> details. <laughs> Thank you. Great Thanks fun. for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. It was very kind words. Very kind words. Thank you. And it's you been great, um, uh, you know, having met you um, during Telstra days. Exactly. Yeah, and thanks for reaching out again. I really appreciate it. Look, uh, this is the least I can do. Um, and whoever has got, like, the passion to do something in life, mm. Brains Platt is all about supporting these people regardless. So we're here to... Uh, probably help as much as we can mm -hmm. and if we can whenever we can because sometimes we can't do much yeah but let's start from um greece your background um so i am australian with greek heritage i uh come from a family um, that both parents are from a Greek island called Limnos. My grandparents migrated here along with my dad in the 1950s, post-World War II. Uh, as a lot of you would probably know, it was a really, really tough time. A lot of poverty, especially on the Greek islands. Uh, so they came here seeking a better life. I stand on uh, shoulders of extremely strong people, um, like all migrants. They leave part of their heart um, back in their homeland and come here seeking better opportunities. My grandmothers um, had to do a lot on their own, so I stand on their shoulders. And they're very strong women that I um, learned about perseverance, tenacity, um, and a really good work ethic. So I, I got that from them. And I learned about one really important thing, to always be... Uh, financially secure in yourself. As a female, you must always be financially secure. And you also looking after yourself, yeah, and don't count on anyone. Exactly, exactly. So um, that's what they taught me. And um, they were very strong women. And um, every time I make a decision in life or a business decision, they're always in the back of my mind. Um, they also taught me about how to be proud of my heritage whilst balancing it with um, my Australian identity. And I think that's really important. I think in Australia, we need to embrace all the cultures that are here, but at the same time, understand how we can bring those cultures and make Australia a much better place as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I find that really important. Excellent, excellent. So obviously you lived with your grandmothers and your, your family. Did you feel that they were living in a, a split life between Greece and Australia? Hmm. Even mm. to some extent, a split personality between the two and merging the two lives all the time? 
Yeah, I think I think for any um as I grew up, I, I realize now that um they would uh encourage me strongly to learn Greek, encourage me strongly to learn Greek dancing. And I, I grew up got wondering why I needed to do that. Um, and I realized that it was their way of keeping um, the identity, the Greek culture alive. And that was half of their identity. And um, I think it's still important that uh, we keep all our cultures alive here. That is your identity. Um, however, uh, I, I do empathize with um, the migrants that come here that um, find it difficult to assimilate. So I think Australia, put, we need to, as Australians, we need to put our arms around these people and go, it's going to be okay. We are the land of opportunity. We still are the land of opportunity. And um, however, you can still, um, you know, be who you are. You don't need to completely um, remove yourself yeah. from all your culture and your identity. We should embrace that, and it enriches Australian fabric of life. So did it help you, like, to just grow your personality and progress mm. in life here, yeah? having to the, this huge heritage background yeah. on your shoulders? Did it give you a push in Australia? Yeah, it certainly Was did. Was it like a value add for your life? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think uh, the, the Greek, the Greek uh, cultural background really. Um, made me proud of who I was um, and understanding where my grandparents and my parents came from, um, that tenacity, that work ethic has led me into um, being a more empathetic person as well, working very hard, but also empathetic of the cultural diversity that exists within Australia's um, fabric, as well as um, understanding how to work with people from different cultures and has also built me up to be able to work in South Korea for Hyundai, uh, in India uh, for Yamaha and most recently in Saudi Arabia. So having that cross-cultural understanding, that's what uh, I think I've been able to to gain from my Greek heritage as well as studying Greek um, at Sydney University and going to Greece. So and you studying. can talk... Uh... Greek? Yes, yep. I can. I'm not fluent, okay. um, but I, I you know. Say and, yes, yes, I can say Tikanis. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Para que lo... Yes, okay. exactly. But I think the importance that it also taught me was the importance of learning a second language. And I think um, Australians need to embrace that a little bit more. Learning a second language is extremely important. Not only do you, you know, um, understand. Do you know how hard it is just to for your kids to learn any second second language in Australia, it's almost impossible. They don't see they don't see any value in it. Even like in the, in the Australian education system, they don't push kids to learn mm. extra languages. It's like an option. Yeah, which is very different to Europe, yeah. right? In Europe and in 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 the Middle East and in other countries in the world, people learn know more than one language and they're richer for it they also have a better understanding of other cultures and the and the mentality of other cultures and i think for us we're already an isolated country so for us to bridge that gap um with uh the world i think it, um it would really really uh be beneficial if australia australian education system promotes um a learning of a second language much more because geo politically we are in a very volatile area and i think it's very important that we start learning um especially languages that are around uh this uh this location that we're in excellent know. excellent i want to go back to greece because greece is not about hard work and that's it greece has a lot of heritage greece is all about philosophy education olympics yes uh competition sports uh just a very um, intense and valuable country. And mm. so why we can only see the hardworking side of Greece in Australia? And that's it. What about the other sides? 
So from my understanding, you mean the um, the fact that uh, Greece gave, like, a lot of civilization um, to the world uh, and, uh, like, from history to philosophy to Stoicism. Um, I think if you find, if you look hard enough, uh, the Greek community in Australia, um, like, run by the Greek Orthodox community as well as um, other co- um, smaller community groups, um, in March we have a... Um, an amazing, rich uh, cultural festival that lasts around two months, run by the Greek Orthodox community out of Lakemba. Um, and with that comes a lot of lectures, um, and you can go and to these lectures, and they uh, showcase the ancient uh, Greek philosophy, literature, poetry, um, and, uh, yeah, showcase that. So I would really, really encourage that. Also coming up in October um, at uh, Northern Street Leichhardt Den- uh, Palace, or Den- yeah, Palace Cinemas, we've got the Greek Film Festival coming up. So you can see uh, what modern Greek films uh, are like, and there's a lot of rich, deep meaning that actually gleans from, uh, you know, that ancient uh, philosophy and civilization as well. But so if we look back in the 50s, I think there was a, like a huge migration wave of mm. Greek and Italian mm. to Australia. Now it's the time for, I think we bypassed the Chinese wave. Now it's more Indian wave just uh, floating to Australia. Um, do you think Greek people have been dissolved in this society and mm. they lost their uh, Greek identity or to some extent or not really? Oh, well, I think unfortunately it's inevitable um, that uh, with the generations uh, culture, it does dissolve, um, especially as um, people intermarry with other cultures. I think the Greek culture has done quite well um, to preserve uh it- I, I would I put that down to um, the strong Greek Orthodox religion um, and the ch- and the institution of the church, uh, the Greek Orthodox Church. I think it's done very well to preserve um, the Greek identity. I think, unfortunately, if we look at um, the enrolment of Greek language in the University of Sydney, where I went, um, to the University of um, New South Wales, mm-hmm. that has uh, decreased. So, so I'm actually working um, with uh, people to in the community to try and increase those numbers of Greek uh, language re- enrolments in university because that's where you get the understanding of the Greek civilization of even modern day um, culture, a uh, Greek culture as well. Mm. So you still keep that Greek culture alive and breathing um, within the Australian context. So I think it's not just for Greek language. But all languages at universities in Australia are um, in crisis. Most of them are. And um, we all need to get behind that. So this is my actual um, passion to uh, promote and support languages within uh, schools and universities because I think that would enrich uh, Australians. Excellent, excellent. So you mentioned universities. Obviously, you studied in Australia and you ended up working technology. Tell us a bit more about this cycle in your life. Yeah, so I ended up in technology. That was not uh, the the profession that I thought I would end up in. I dreamed about being a um, foreign correspondent, like journalist. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> anyway, I went to uh, Sydney University, studied a Bachelor of Arts, majoring in Modern Greek and HR. Then I went straight on to my Master's of International Business and Marketing. So I ended up in marketing and I travelled uh, over Overseas, worked in Hyundai, as I said, in South Korea and um, Yamaha in India, and then came back and applied, as as you do, as a lot of people do, for a lot of graduate positions. Um, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be selected for a marketing graduate position at Telstra in enterprise and government marketing. And um, that was the door that opened up into the tech industry, um, telecommunications and tech. I quickly realized that uh, I was, I had skill set that was more suited to sales or relationship management. And um, I was given a chance um, by a manager um, to 
uh, be part of his team um, and uh, lead, uh, and have a portfolio of um, global investment banks. So I'm very grateful. And that's one thing I would say. Um, gratitude is extremely important throughout your career. Um, be grateful to those that have um, seen your potential and uh, given you a chance. So are you saying that working in technology or in tech overall, does not require that you have uh, a degree in technology itself, like in IT or mm. any other specific fields. Like you can come from anywhere and simply work in technology. Well, certainly tech sales um, or, in, or whatever you want to actually name it, a relationship management, it doesn't require you to have deep technology, um, technological understanding. That's something that I was able to pick up as I, I went along in my career and um, really important to understand how technology, technological solutions uh, can assist and be good for and do good for businesses. So what I've realized is that technology used for good can really improve not only small to medium um, enterprises, but also those in remote areas. Um, as we know, Australia is really large. And what um, throughout my career, what I really enjoyed was seeing how uh, the technology solutions, whether it be satellite, whether it be fiber connectivity, cloud, um, was able to assist those that are most remote um, and, uh, you know, assist them with their small business ideas um, or or even um, small f their um, education as well. So sometimes um, we dream about stuff and then mm. we, ended, we always end up working in a completely different field. Mm. Obviously, you mentioned that it wasn't your dream and then you ended up in technology and this field. Uh, but then... Imagine if you actually worked in your dreams, if you realized your dreams. Would you be a different person now than you are now? Wow. <laughs> Just picture that. Yeah, I've thought about it. Or like what happens if I um, ended up being a foreign correspondent? Um, yes, uh, I would be a different person. Um, I may not even be alive. <laughs> alive? Yes, right. if if you um if you go into war uh, war zones um and that yeah you, you it's quite a risky job. So on one hand, um, I'm very grateful to the opportunity that um, being in the tech industry has allowed uh, for uh, giving a giving a chance to a young um, female who didn't necessarily have a deep um, tech. Uh, experience, um, knowledge. And it's also been quite lucrative as well. So I guess the message I would say to people is that you might have, you know, you might be going down a path um, and it's quite easy. You're actually on, on someone else's path. Mm. You need to create your own. Um, and you might be setting out on, on, a, uh, with a certain goal, but life, life happens and you just need to identify opportunities and take them, um, and make the best out of them. Excellent. Um, and you drive your own career and, um, no one else is going to drive your career for you. So you need to be there pushing consistently. And, um, that's what I did. I'm like, I need to challenge myself. So, um, I took that upon myself to keep moving, um, and keep finding other challenges within my career and uh, shaping it the way that I wanted to, because I couldn't see anyone else that had done that before me. Perfect. So, and then you find out that Australia is not enough for you your dreams are beyond australia and out of any country you can imagine saudi arabia you as a woman who lived in the western world very liberal mm. type environment um you don't have any strict rules whatsoever you ended up in saudi arabia tell us a bit more about this side of uh, your life Yes. So, um, as I said, I've always been up for a challenge. Uh, living in India uh, also taught me a lot of things uh, around um, how to be a single female um, but be extremely aware 
And um, I... When you say aware, what does it mean? Aware of your environment, aware of uh, the different cultures, aware of being respectful of where you you are in that, um, uh, where you are. So you can't bring your... Uh, or you can't always bring your Australian values to each area. So um, India really taught me about that, to respect those around you. And that's the mindset that I brought uh, to with me to Saudi Arabia. Um, so uh, I ended uh, up with a large um, uh, technology firm, American technology firm, and uh, as a cybersecurity specialist. And I was given, and I, I was at a bit of a crossroads after 14 years in the tech industry. I thought, what next? Um, and I thought, well, I've been given an opportunity to do something different, and uh, I embraced that. So 14 years and you had enough. Said, so, okay. What's next for me? Mm. Well, I wanted to do something myself, um, like like what you're doing right now yeah. um, with Brain Splat. Uh, so I decided to start my own uh, cybersecurity consulting business, but at the same time, I was also um, I also uh, found myself in Saudi Arabia and uh, for a holiday to see some of my friends. Uh, because Saudi Arabia has opened up and, um, you know, young single females can actually travel. Tell uh, us a bit more about this stuff, really, because I think viewers need to understand a bit more about the Saudi Arabia social life. Yeah. Um, how much did it change over the last few years? Well, I can only go from what a lot of people have been telling me what it was like. So I've come, um, I've been there for, you know, the last year around six times. And um, as soon as I got there, I really felt uh, welcomed, respected. Uh, I didn't feel at all um, uh, judged. Uh I at most that's the first question that everyone asks me like how is it to be uh, a, a single female in in Saudi Arabia and I say I feel like I'm at the most um, secure country in the world um, extremely safe and uh, I am allowed to not wear a hijab that's what a lot of people Even also in ask Riyadh, me. in the capital? In Riyadh. I've only spent time in Riyadh, yes. Yeah. And, um, no, you don't as a, you don't have to. Um, nor are you, do you feel pressured to? But it's also brought me a, an understanding, um, a renewed understanding of the Islamic faith. I did study Arab Islamic studies at University of Sydney, um, which, was great, but actually being in an Islamic country or kingdom like Saudi Arabia has uh, made me appreciate uh, a renewed appreciation of of the Saudi people, um, the Islamic faith, and um, what is happening in Saudi Arabia is I feel uh, that um, Prince Mohammed bin Salman is uh, conducting. A huge, huge, huge game changer. He's got a vision. Um, it's the 2030 vision. And I feel like the entire country is, uh, along with him on this vision of changing the country 180 degrees. Uh, and, um, it's from- amazing how much he's loved by his people. Yeah. 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 And they're all on board. Um, so leadership is also, um, good leadership is, uh, very, integral when you're moving the country 180 degrees and everyone's on board and it's great to see it brings a lot of hope it brings a lot of investment opportunities and a lot of momentum and never have I been in a country where everyone is uh, hopeful and that's really powerful and uh, that's what made me go back again and see and assess the firstly the the tech and cybersecurity opportunities, and then from there it, I got a lot of questions from people in Australia um, about what it's like over there for their business. Could they? Could I assist them? So I built a quite a large network 
um, over there. And I've been leveraging that um, and assisting businesses in Australia. So that's another service that I provide. And um, it's going really well. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, so if you if you want to learn more about Saudi Arabia um, and the business opportunities over there, uh, let me know. Um, I think uh, Australia um, can Australian. There's a lot for Australian businesses, uh, and Saudi Arabia seems in the next five years is just going to increase and advance at a rapid scale. And when you have um, about sixty percent of the population under the age of thirty, thirty five, it is such a a groundswell. It's creating a groundswell of um, change, and there's a desire for change. Um, so it's great to see. Look, uh, all respect to the king of Saudi Arabia, current king, but my deepest respect is to the prince, Prince Mohammed mm-hmm. bin Salman. He's doing a great job. He's doing something that um, we as young people from all all over the world are observe, observing, and we're very respectful of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And we can easily say that we support him in all kind, shape, way, or form, and hopefully... Uh, with your help and help of people like you, um, we just expand this relationship be- mm. between Australia and Saudi Arabia. And, which, we, and personally, I'm hoping that it will go beyond um, economy, money, finance, because every time you think about Saudi Arabia, it's how much money I'm going to make in there. Uh, the Saudi peoples have a lot of good heritage, um, very respectful. Um, their way of life is completely different is very unique for mm. in the region and hopefully the the prince will become king one day we're all waiting for this and he will do great for his mm. people um yeah so just back on so you did this move you, you you expanded your wings you went to saudi arabia um what is the main difference between dealing with business people in Saudi Arabia versus dealing with business people in Australia? Especially that you're dealing with the two. Yeah, sides. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a really good question because uh, I think uh, a lot of my job is managing the expectations of Australian business people who uh, want things done really urgently. <laughs> um Business, in Australia? Well, that's the mindset. Like yeah. a business mindset is like, let's get things done. Yeah, we've signed a contract. Let's go. Um, or when when are we going to capital raise? Or when is that contract going to get over the line? Um, it, the difference is that Saudi Arabians are um, want to build up a relationship first. It's a it's a business relationship based on trust. So you need to build. You need to be on the ground. You need to um, really take the time to get to know them um and uh that can take time (laughs) and uh so my my advice and counsel to australian businesses is that um you need to invest the time to be over there and uh, to understand where they're coming from. Uh, they do have money, uh, but that's not the only thing. Like they they see things um, as a relationship and you need to build the relationship and earn their trust before um, things can be done. Do you feel that Australians are respectful in Saudi Arabia? Like do they think high of Australian people overall? I think, um, look, a Saudi, oh, yeah, so a, a Saudi Arabia has been closed, uh, for quite a while now. So, um, I think Australians need to open, um, and understand what the new Saudi Arabia is all about. Um, and, uh, there are a lot of myths that need to be dispelled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, I think traveling over there is, uh, a really good idea. Like I, I was speaking to, um, an acquaintance the other day and he went over there for esports. Um, so he's a gamer and, uh, they had one of the largest gaming, uh, uh, sporting competitions ever. And he was blown away. He's like, I never expected Riyadh to be like that. Like that. Um, and the people are so sophisticated and uh, organized. And, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of investment that goes into making everything 
perfect. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to go over there. Um, and uh, there's a lot of conferences. There's a lot of, you know, in, in March, I went to Leap, which is uh, the one of the largest IT tech conferences in the world globally um, in Riyadh. And you'll really get an understanding of um, not only, you know, the tech industry over there, but also the people. The Saudi people are really well welcoming, sophisticated and uh, ready and willing to do business and a lot of them speak uh, english very fluently very as fluently, well 100%. yeah so look there, there will be a lot of graduates now watching this episode and i would say how where do i start so is there any number they can call uh, any reference does the australian government provide any support you're laughing i know and like is there any startup points they can refer to for what exactly? For just to go and build this relationship with Saudi Arabia and expand their business horizon. You mean gra for graduates for specifically? Grads or even business uh, people overall? Yeah. So, um, for graduates, I'm not really, I'm not really certain. There's always, um, like there's Austrade over there. Um, so they, they could assist. Uh, there is also a really great foundation here called the Australian, um, Saudi Arabian Business Council, uh, or forum. Uh, so you can reach out to them and they could give you an understanding. Uh, that would be more for, um, small to medium, um, businesses. Um, also, uh, yeah, you can you can reach out to me if you're a business. So you're the main point. Right? Uh, yes, um, I I do introductions, but I also assist with um, the follow up until until the business uh, deal is done. Um, that's my competitive advantage. Yeah. So these groups in Australia, like the uh, Saudi Australian Business Chamber or whatever they forum. call themselves, yeah. forum. Uh, now, yeah. do they actually promote themselves in Australia? Like, because I yeah. don't think a lot of people would know that they do ex exist. They're, they're a great bunch of guys, yeah. um, okay. and they do exist, and they're based in Sydney, um, as well as Saudi Arabia. So, yeah, they're um, they're a membership org organization, so you can be part of their their organization okay. and get membership. So, yeah, excellent. I don't want their membership. I just want to hear what they have to say. And what is really their view, what they're trying to achieve? Because I know like how Saudi are trying just to expand their horizon and mm. be all over the world. So I'm not sure how much they're doing here in Australia, but I will leave it up to you. Maybe we'll organize something with them one day. Yeah. So Saudi Arabia, um, and then that's not enough. Like how hungry are you? Like you always want something different something new something um that will expand challenge you on a day-to-day -day basis that you decide just to run for politics out of anything <laughs> in australia and like running for politics in the yeah. next election yeah yeah this has been um a pursuit for 12 years 12 years yeah so um nothing happens overnight uh and of course. a lot of life is about timing and um, I've been given the opportunity this year uh, to run for um, a council election as well as a federal seat. Um, and this has been like a, a long-term dream or a lofty ambition, as I say. Um, and everything's a hobby until you actually get paid for it. Uh, but I think that um, you need to... Always challenge yourself uh, and uh, strive for higher. We've been given a privilege to live in this country. We have peace. Um, I, I've been to places where the economy is not stable. Um, there is no peace. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's a privilege to be here. And I think um, it's also a privilege to be in a democracy. Uh, so I think if you can... Uh, you should participate in our democracy as much as possible. So you can be just a volunteer on the day of the election um, or you can decide to do something crazy like myself and run for politics, which is not an easy thing. Um, you need a lot of volunteers. You need to fundraise yourself. It's almost like starting your own business. 
Um, so, uh, I've been able to leverage the skills that I've had, um, that I've built for, uh, throughout my career of tenacity, perseverance, um, and grit. And what my, what my grandmothers have taught me, what my parents have taught me, um, to just keep going, keep challenging yourself. And, um, that's what I'm bringing to, uh, politics because I want to leave this earth having made some small change for the, for the greater good. For the people. For the people, for the, for the community, um, for the good of Australia, for um, people that risk everything to start a business here because a lot of migrants come here um, and they don't have many opportunities to join large corporations, so they start a business. You mentioned democracy in Australia. What do you rate the level of democracy in Australia in comparison to everywhere else? Like out of 10, what, what would you give uh, democracy in Australia? Oh, that's a, that's a difficult question. Um, democracy is not perfect. Um, however, I think it's a really, uh, great way of, um, everyone in that, in that country having a say. And the fact that, um, democracy is, a mandat um, sorry, voting is mandatory in Australia. I think um, everyone should be leveraging that uh, and making their vote count, not just voting because you're going to get a fine. Actually, I encourage everyone, do some research before the next um, council election um, in New South Wales, which is September 14. Do some research on who's actually running. Understand what the policies that um, they're uh, running for, what changes they want to make, what is their, and most importantly, what career or experience are they going to bring to that role? I think it's your responsibility to expect more from those that are um, representing you. Expect more and then the standard of politician will increase. And I think you need to, we need as a collective to hold politicians to account and vice versa. Politicians need to um, be honest, authentic and hold themselves to account. It's like, this is what I'm going to do for you. Oh, by the way, this is what we've done. I heard you. This, These are the improvements. And from my perspective, I want to bring um, my knowledge of uh, all the businesses I've t uh, I've come into contact with um, uh, across my 14-year career, um, how technology can assist and make and be used for good uh, in our society, and also my knowledge of um, what the world is doing out there, right? Especially like Saudi Arabia, they have a vision. I want to make sure that we have a vision here, and everyone is is behind that vision. So the best form of leadership is when everyone knows the vision and what we're working towards. Do you feel we have a nation here or we just have a bunch of uh, states linked between each other? Hmm. I think, I think w you, unity is important. I really do. And I think uh, we can all work towards being one unified country. And um, I think that's going to be ongoing. And uh, I think if we're strong, it, we will be stronger on a geopolitical scale if we consider ourselves a united Australia, one Australia. One Australia. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get there one day. Um, look, as you said, people here in Australia, they always um, complain. They whinge about the economy, they, about the kids at school, the uh, hospitals, um, health system, everything, but they never do anything, especially with the voting and politics. They stay, they distance themselves without knowing that really politicians are guiding their life and they're mm -hmm. just putting the rules in place and they're telling them what to do, really. Now, what is your message? Like, given that you are from a technical background, mm. We work in technology. There's a huge voters and a lot of people who are technical tech savvy who don't actually participate in politics. Mm. What is your message to them? 
Mm. Get involved. Yeah. Uh, wake up, do something instead of just sitting back and yeah. hoping, hoping for things to happen. Like, what is your message to them? Yeah. So, I, my message is, yeah, definitely get involved. It's um, it, your, uh, like, volunteering has gone down in Australia. And uh, volunteering is is extremely important, especially when it comes to politics, because if you don't help your candidate or help your friend that's running, um, then it, it's very difficult uh, to to really get anywhere. So uh, what I say is, especially those in tech, um, yes, uh, you can you have. Um, the ability to really make change and to be part of it and not just sit back and see what, what, what goes on. Um, so if you have skills of data analytics, if you have AI skills, if you have, um, you know, even just a tech selling skills like I do, try and rally, um, Use behind it for the someone. Of the site yeah, instead yeah. of just sitting back in your exactly. office. Exactly. Because, um, you can help uh, up, uh, someone that is a candidate or your local politician. Um, and I have, uh, a gr- I'm very fortunate because I have a um, campaign team and I have um, someone that is great at AI, uh, someone that is great at um, data analysis. Um, I have someone that is leading the campaign team with policy uh, knowledge and uh, they're all volunteering. And they're all volunteering. For, all, for what? For, yes, they believe in me, but it's also uh, something higher. It's for the greater good and for, for democracy and for Australia. So the part- that you're representing is not funding any of these functions? Uh, not at a, a, a local government. Yeah. Yeah. But at a federal level, they will provide some assistance and some financial assistance. But it's really up to the individual to fundraise um, for their own campaign. So what motivates you to run for an election if, if no one is supporting you, really? It's just like it's a self-initiative that you're running. Uh, as I said, I want to leave this earth having made uh, some systemic change. So I, I realized very early on that you could be part of a charity and they do some really great work. But to actually make changes to the system that are lasting, um, that's when you have to actually be part of um, uh, the political landscape. And uh, running for politics is is um, not for the faint-hearted, but is um, what I've chosen to do. And hopefully I'm successful and hopefully Hopefully, I can, you know, bring my knowledge my of business, of, of IT, as being a young um, female from a professional female from a, a migrant background, all in the mix um, to improve the lives of the community uh, and everyone that comes here and just wants, you know, to have people represent them, to give them a collective voice, uh, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a new, um, recently arrived here, whether you are a single mother. Um, um, whether you're a young professional female, whoever, everyone. Um, so I want to stand up for as many people as I can, um, but also use technology for the greater good to improve processes within government, um, to digitize uh, a lot of processes that um, can lead to increased productivity um, and make the economy go um, more robust and uh, build up um you know, uh, industry, like smart manufacturing to um, improve uh, the the housing issue at the moment. How can we do that with reforms, um, with, you know, speeding up the DA approval process at a council level? You know, I know that other countries in the world have, you know, um, a much faster DA approval process. How can we utilize technology and harness that to improve uh, the process? Like I know um, Victor Dominello, um, Minister Victor Dominello uh, did a lot with, uh, you know, digitizing a lot of the processes, bringing out um, Service New South Wales app that really enabled and uh, assisted um, the, the last of many so you as a young politician I have to classify as politician now um, what are the main concerns of the young people young generation of Australian 
of mm. Australians in Australia. What are the main concerns that uh, traditional politics is not responding to? Like, they don't really take them into consideration. Like, we hear a lot of stuff. We hear a lot of promises. And then there's, in on the delivery stage, there is absolutely nothing. Yeah. What do you what do you see as the main concern of the young generation here? Hmm. I have been speaking to a lot of um people or the youth. Uh and um I guess the, uh, a lot of the, the the common concerns that are coming out are um the the economy is very stagnant. You know, will we have uh, the right jobs in in the future for us? Uh, the housing issue, <laughs> um, like uh, painful, very yeah, painful. painful. Yeah, the medium average um, home in Sydney is now a million dollars. So, if you can find anything, yes, if it, yes. So, housing is an issue. Um, the average birth rate per person has gone down dramatically at an all time low. Uh, why is that? Uh, because having the family is, is quite expensive. Um, so these are very concerning issues for the youth. And how can we, um, as politicians, or potential politicians generate and drive industry so that there are jobs for the future of Australians. So the cost to ease the cost of living issues. So, um, you know, housing is more affordable. Um, and so having a family and the child, uh, the cost of childcare is not one of the most expensive in all of the OECD countries. How can we do that? Mm-hmm. And a lot of that will come down to, you know, finding ways of increasing productivity, uh, removing the red tape and uh, finding different ways of, um, you know, giving subsidies uh, that are more um, conducive to providing, um, you know, more childcare opportunities and options. Excellent. Excellent. Look, um, I wish you all the best. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to succeed uh, with your campaign in politics as you have done with everything else and you've succeeded so far. Thank you. But for the tech industry, for the people who are working in the tech industry, please give a chance to people like Fiona. Change. Don't be hesitant. Vote with your brain, not with your emotions, because we need people like Fiona. So please support her. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Excellent. Look, Fiona, there's a few more questions I would love to ask you. Uh, mainly is like, what is, what is your most regret in life so far? What do you regret doing most in life so far? My biggest regret? Uh, um, I can't live with life with no regrets. Yeah, I don't, I find a way to make a positive out of everything. So, um, and accept life for whatever comes my way and just try and change anything that I see as a negative into a positive. That's my mantra. There's, everything happens for a reason. So if I bring you back in time, you would, you would live your life exactly the same way that, that you've done so far? Or you would change something in it? No, I've never thought about it, actually. Um, uh, no, that's a lie. I have thought about a oh, what if, but as you keep on living life, um, it works out. There's an answer. You just need to wait for that answer. Life, you just need to have core confidence in yourself and believe in yourself. And um, and then life will just figure it's itself out. Look, uh, I have been watching you like for the last I don't know hour. Maybe we're talking now. You've mentioned Australia so many times, and every time you mention Australia with passion, how much do you love this country? I have never seen anyone who loved this country as much as you do. To be honest with you, you're so <laughs> passionate about it. Yeah. Well, what is there not to love? And I think um, 
I I love it more and more the more I experience and live in other places as well. So I um and you need to you need to be passionate of um where you're born and where you're raised and the privilege and the opportunities that have come from living in this country with uh, a great education system a um a great democracy uh yes there are flaws but um you can be the change everyone you know democracy comes from the greek word demos which means people right you are the democracy but uh, the greek civilization exactly exactly and one of my passions is etymology which is the study of words right um so i think people need to really realize that democracy actually means people you're ruled by and uh, the people rule so you need to get out there and um that's what australia has given you the opportunity it is one of your civic duties I don't think many people realize that it is your duty as an Australian to participate in the democracy and not to sit on the sideline. You can sit in the sideline or you can decide to go and play on the field. And um I think everyone should really decide at some point to to take that step and play on the field and not just wait on the sideline. Fantastic. We didn't talk much about your family uh, in details. Do you have a big family? It's growing. <laughs> yes, um I obviously have my my lovely parents that have stood by me through the ups and the downs. Um they are the two most important people in my life right now. Um and have always been. They have uh always believed in me and um no matter what crazy ideas I have had, um they've always supported me in their own way. Um I'm very grateful. What would grateful. you say to your parents now? This is your opportunity. I would never change you for anyone in the world. I think um I'm extremely privileged to have you as my parents and if I I'm half of the parent that you guys are, I'll be very grateful when I, you know, hopefully have children on my own. Yeah. So, um that's what that's the message I give my parents. Are they proud of you? I believe they are. They tell me sometimes. You know, if, um Should they tell you more? <laughs> uh, no. I don't think so. No, no, no. Migrant parents, they they're proud in their quiet way. Um and they gave me the tools that I needed uh to then do what I wanted with um like they never pressured me to be a certain way. If anything, they're like stop. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to India? Why are you going to Korea? You know, th- those things. They um they were concerned, um but I think now 20 years later, they're uh yeah, quietly very proud. Who's your idol? I think it would be my grandmothers. Yeah. They would be my grandmothers who came here with no understanding of what Australia would be like. Um one particular grandmother, my mom's mom, she traveled here for a month on a boat and then um this is the 1950s took a train from melbourne for two weeks to the middle of uh the australian outback desert in queensland oh my god and that's where she was on meant her own? to stay yeah to um that's where her husband was waiting for her oh my god she was 36 It's a very similar age um to where I find myself uh, and um she took that chance um for a better life and uh she worked extremely hard and then unfortunately 15 years later after two kids uh her husband passes away so she has to make many serious life decisions without knowing much english at all she decided to sell the farm and move to sydney and um there she she had to manage her finances manage a family all by herself and um she yeah i think she's one of the most courageous women along with my my dad's mom as well who decided to come here face all the stigma of being a single um mother are they still alive unfortunately no No, they've um since passed away, but they're always alive in my mind and in my heart. Do you talk to them every night or when you need to or yeah, really? Yeah, I channel their energy and I I wonder before I make a big decision what would they be doing? If life is getting hard, 
hard in inverted commas <laughs> um, because nothing is as hard as what they do, they've what done. What do you call them, nana in Greek or like yeah, 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 yeah. I want. I always go back and go and think about what they would have done, and um, they would just say it's life. Get on with it. Just get on with it. Um, and I think. Yeah, having that in the back of my mind um, makes me realize, yeah, just be strong. Keep going. It'll all work out. Um, just, uh, yeah, never give up. I'm going to give you one minute to hug them. This is your <laughs> chance. Imagine they're back in life and then really re right in front of you now. Mm. You would hug them. You would mm -hmm. kiss them. What would you tell them? First thing you would ever say to them straight away. Um, that I admire them and I draw from their strength every day, every day. And I'm so grateful for all their hard work because most migrants, especially back then in the 1950s, 60s, experienced extreme racism, came here with like literally $2 and, um, there weren't many services that assisted migrants to assimilate or to learn the language. And uh, they had to pretty much do it all on their own. Um, most of them never went back. And uh, they essentially l built, their whole life was just building for the next generations. So they sacrificed pretty much everything. Their youth, they would say that a lot. The war happened um, and then they were just, all they knew is a life of work. So I just want to say to them, I'm extremely grateful and I think that's one thing that I learnt and I've carried throughout, um, I try and carry throughout my entire life, gratitude. People don't remember what you say to them or what you did. They only remember how you made them feel. So a simple thank you for someone to someone really will assist you, especially in your career and um, the tech career, as you know, uh is very very, very closed as well yeah so you're bound to meet the same person a couple of years later they'll remember exactly how you made them feel so um yeah i think gratitude is extremely important i, I don't want to end up this conversation because uh, and i i think we can still talk and like keep on talking for the next two hours three <laughs> hours we'll never finish off um but hey what do you want from this life, Fiona? Mm. What do you really want? Technology, politics, um, relationship, businesses, running from one place to another, different countries. Seriously, yeah. what do you want? Well, I've always said my biggest fear is that I would have a boring life. And, that's n and what I want is a non-boring life. You're only here once. There's no take two. <laughs> There's only um, one chapter in in that book. So um, make the most of it. And, um, you know, some people say you can't have it all, but you can't also con control timing. So embrace every opportunity that is given to you and um, make the most of it. And what I want is to have a very exciting life and to give back as much as I can. Because as I said, I feel like I've had a very privileged life and um, I want to, yeah, give back and um, just leave my mark, my little little mark on this earth. Good, excellent. I'm sure you're writing your own book. Uh, you're writing your life the way you choose to. Mm. Um, we're so proud of you. Keep doing whatever you're doing because hopefully you will end up um, achieving and just getting to your mm. targets in life and dreams. Um, your final say to the young generation, what would you tell them now? You control your own destiny. Be grateful. Gratitude will take you a long way. And if you don't have all the skill set, it's okay. Keep pushing. You'll get there, but never give up. T tenacity, perseverance, persistence. They're the main things and drive that will set you apart from anyone else, even the most smartest person. 
Use their heart or their brain? Combination. I think, yeah, both. Both. Thank you. I have felt extremely comfortable. Um, I love the structure. Uh, the questions are really well thought. There's a lot of great flow. Um, you're a great presenter. Thank and you. I really believe in your mission. The mission of trying to create uh, an understanding out there that uh, IT, the IT industry, IT careers are not linear. You can come at it from any other way. Um, you don't need to have a super deep tech knowledge to actually be part of the tech industry and use it for good. And I think Brainsplat is doing an amazing job showcasing that. Would you recommend Brainsplat to other guests? Definitely.